so this, this is like an awkward part because usually usually when we do an episode we spend the first like 15 having a just a catch up before we get into who who talks first you talk first i talk first but it's like we're recording part two of this special right after recording part one we had a little break we we had a chit chat we had a bitch we bitch we paid we, we... Had a... <laughs> drank we um drank, yeah yeah, I had a short break there. Uh, today, we are continuing to talk about Torchwood Series 2. This is part two of our Torchwood Series 2 special. We're going to be talking about episodes 6 to 13, as well as giving an overall recap of the season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird because we don't have the... We've already exhausted all of our topics and, and conversational points. Yeah, it's, it's interesting when like I listen back to the part two of Torchwood, knowing that we'd recorded like a, a two-part special almost mm-hmm. you know and it's like it's a continuation but it's fun though it's two-part epic two two yeah two-part it's the splash tap what's that swashbuckling swashbuckling a swashbuckling <laughs> special it is really rainy today so it is swashbuckling it is, here in perth mate, so it is miserable it's so chilly at the bottom of my place car, terribly and i was like fuck like yeah, it's cold. Like, cold. This is like the, one of the wettest winters I remember. Yeah. Like it is nonstop rain. I was walking the doggo today. Yeah. And next minute I'm like, ah, yeah. let's run to a tree, gem gem. It's like global warming, man. It's yeah. real. It's it's burning to a crisp in England. It's it's and we're, we're like flooding here, flooding up to our hips. We had here. damage at my house. Did ya? Yeah, we had a whole fence go fucking flying into the pool. Damn. Which I had to fish out and try and fix it. I was like, this is unfixable. Yeah, wow. Well, like yeah. I said, we had that power cut on that, that film set and um, I was like driving yeah. away from the set a- afterwards and I could see there was like a tree down. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, that's where our power went. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, because we're such like a, we're literally like 75% of the time as, a, as like a state, we're like so no, that saying no so one much. really no one really like every time you say it, it i'm like am i gonna cut that out no i won't but i hate that saying i so said much. one thing that you had to cut out was what was that was it <laughs> was it the c-bomb did it revolve around the C-bomb? yeah i know you hate the c-word i don't mind i i dropped a I just, c-bomb in part one and i was like i i try not to say it because i know you hate it i try and uh well i try and keep this obviously this is not a family friendly show it's mm-hmm. two boys drinking beer and uh having a bitch and shit talk but sometimes i'm like maybe we can uh one's drinking gin maybe we don't have to be uh I disgusting get, i get one c bomb per episode but this is part two this is part two well, you so don't I get always said the c bomb no i was just joking but i said um no. i said um you don't need to say it again i said it was like a- <laughs> <laughs> uh, that see that's gross <laughs> he hates it no that's he gross hates it. i don't like so that you said that's I'm gross gonna- I think after we record, you're like, for the record, I am taking that out. And I was like, okay, do what you want, man. Well, maybe I'll, Edit it yourself. I'll beep what you just said. Yeah, there you go. They'll like, never know. They'll have to read say. my lips, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Aiden hates it. I don't know why. It's from The Sopranos, and I found it hilarious. So I was That's like, I'm going gonna to bring that into you're the a, show. You're a dirty pig. I am shooting out, but that is correct. You're a dirty pig. You see, he shaved his moustache for the sex education season He misses four. it. He misses it. He does. Yeah, he was like, fuck you, Eric. Why? I think there's like a video of him in this story. Like, fuck you, Eric. Why don't you have a moustache? I know. It's so dumb. I don't know why they can't have a moustache. I hope he gets show. it for his doctor, because that's cool. I know. I want... I, there's no doctor with facial hair. Mm, I want it. So yeah. If I ever played the doctor, Represent. I would have facial hair. Like a... I don't want like a goatee. I just want like kind of like what we have. Well, this even, even this needs to trim in. Um, but yeah. yeah, I love that. I feel like but we I just l- have the de- depresso early twenties. I don't know what I'm doing in my life. Facial hair. Yeah, I had that conversation of it with myself <laughs> recently about what the fuck I'm gonna do. Well, so. I feel like this is like uh, it's, it's like you know uh, you haven't seen it, um, but Cha Cha Real Smooth, very good movie. But it's got um, oh I can't remember the, the actor. Tressa what Cha Cha Real Smooth? Oh, the one on the uh, Apple. Yeah, on, on that Apple you TV, said yeah. you should, and I just abused you the whole night. I was I know, like, "Who I says it's... I don't like?" What did you say? You're like, <laughs> "Oh, you remember. said some like I was just being a dick. To me. I don't know why. I was just you were being so nice, and I was like, it "Was isn't Pete Davidson in it?" It's like, no, but you said someone was in it, and, I, and you're like, "Who says I don't like?" And I was like, <laughs> "No, that <laughs> I was what I said, but no." I, was like, I said it's kind of like King of Staten Island That's vibes, it. and you were like, "Who says I like Pete Davidson?" It's like. Yeah. I'm just a dick sometimes. Yeah, there you I are. I sent Aiden a very nice drunk message on Saturday. Did you? I did, yeah. 
God, I don't remember. I'm yeah, so sorry. I barely remember. Was it? I was a bit um, sent. I think I was. I think I was still shooting when you sent it. Maybe. Maybe. I Speaking think. of shooty, shooty Gawa. Um, I mentioned it at like a family gathering for my girlfriend's dad's birthday, and they're mm. like, they knew it was a thing, and this is wow. what I mean. Even non Doctor Who fans, I was like, you know, shooty. What's that? Even like? non-believers. Yeah, non-believers. They're not believers. <laughs> I was like, you know, from Sex Education, Shooty Gatwa's new doctor. And they're like, oh my God, yeah. Mm. I'm like, now fucking watch it. Fucking watch I'm it. I'm coming back. I'm family now, mm. apparently. That's if they want to see me again. Probably not after that night, mm. but. Um, this is weird for me to. yourself with family, girlfriend's family? Um, you ever fallen over or something? No, I'm pretty good at covering up my tracks, I think. Okay. I think um, I've got a good relationship with uh, my girlfriend's dad uh-huh. in that you know, he's a shit talker. You mm-hmm. know, he's a classic like 60 year old shit talker mm-hmm. man. Um, and I can, I can also bring that energy into a situation if I need to. So, okay. uh, I will, I will, I, I can shit talk back to him and, um, yeah. So we, we have our fun, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and I think usually, unless it's like, because I'm like, I shit talk to him just to match him and give the energy to him. And like, I think he enjoys that, but like, like he's a hard man. You know? Yeah. Um, but when I, I'm not like that normally as a person, right. I'm much more cozy yeah. and shit like that. And so when I like Nick will like blab about something I said or like, you know, I'll walk around with, you know, how Nick and I, we, we have the Grogu teddy bear that we pretend is our, is our kid yeah. and we take it on holidays with us. Yeah. Whenever like that comes up, he like, I get destroyed for being kind of like hashtag cringe with that, which is uh, <laughs> hashtag cringe. totally fair. <laughs> I had to get, I had to, I got taken away from the table by Kim's auntie. Really? <laughs> uh, what have you done, It was mate? a joke. No, it, she oh, did it. She no. did it as a joke. But you... She is a joke, mm-hmm. but I shat myself. But also I was like, that was funny because her, her son got busted for selling vapes at school. <laughs> and it was like a big table. And I was like, so, uh, I won't say her name, but I was like, <laughs> so auntie so-and-so, what did you think about so-and-so getting busted for selling vapes? Known full well that it was like, it was an edgy question mm-hmm. and everyone kind of went silent. And I wanted that reaction. I was like, this is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. And also Kim kind of told me that in like, you know, like a, as you would tell a partner of it, like also don't tell anyone. Yeah, sure. And yeah. then like the auntie's like daughter was there and they looked at, she looked at Kim and they were like looking at each other. And I was you like, you told him? And I was like, cause this guy came to the football. We went to go see United play. Mm-hmm. And I was we like, both did. We, you were there and he was there. And I was like, you know, I asked him if he had any um, vapes at the football. And he said, no. And I was hoping that homie could hook me up. <laughs> and then she stood up and she like took me away. <laughs> and she's like, and everyone was like, oh shit. <laughs> but that's such a chill family. And I was like, sure. And she like pretended to razzle me, but I was like, you know, I was, I can push over it sometimes, maybe too much, but yeah, okay, I get what you mean. My girlfriend's uh, extended family aren't that close, like like, uh, her, like aunties and uncles and stuff. Yeah, they yeah. used to be, but actually, within the five years I've been with them, I've just seen them kind of slowly drift, which is on one hand a shame, but on another part, they're very different people. I don't know why I'm talking about my girlfriend's family dynamics mm. <laughs> on this, but uh, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. It, it, family. I always family. think family's interesting. Family. family. It because is. I've... <laughs> what's the Fast and Furious reference? Yeah. Like, family. 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 Oh, is that what you were doing? Family. Fa- it's from... The Fast and Furious reference from, is just uh, the word it's family. It's from H-Free Podcast. Right. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Unaware. Yes. Um, <laughs> I always find family interesting because, you know, growing up in, in Aussie land as, mm. as, a, as a Brit, uh, since I've been like six, I've only known family to be my mum, my dad and my sister yeah so it's it's bizarre meeting people who have like close families like extended families and stuff and i'm like i've never had that which i think is is sad because whenever i go back to the uk and see family i'm always like this is so nice to like my parents can do their thing and i can run off and chat shit with the cousins and stuff but because i'm never really that close with the cousins because i just haven't grown up with them it's like uh we don't have that we, I totally we get try, that. and they're, they're lovely cousins, and they, and they do try as well. But it, yeah. it isn't, it isn't what it could have been. Which you know, I'm glad I live in Aussie land. This isn't a spiteful thing. My cousin's in Gold Coast right now, but he's not coming to WA. Really? It was one of those things where it's like, oh, uh, you know, either you come to Gold Coast or like we ain't seeing you kind of thing. 
I might, Damn. Get, in I might get in trouble for saying that. But <laughs> Spicy. It yeah, is. right. Also, when it comes to family and your partner's family, I would just say embrace the crazy. I just sure. run with it. Yes. Mm. Because, you know, you'll just see things that make you laugh. But also it's like, you know, this is just this is just funny. And like, as long as they like you and you're not a dickhead, that's fine. I know? actually think that our families are quite similar. Like as in our, our parents? Yes. The one time I think our parents met, which was at the... They actually, the more I think about it, they are very similar. That's actually. what my mom. That's what my mom said to me. I think they met once, which was at the year twelve pre ball, which you had right. here, and yeah. they said the same thing. I think they've only met once. It's like my parents only met Dan's parents once. Interesting. And then he's like my best friend ever. Yeah, like your dad's so. very like wants to go down to the pub and mm-hmm. just have a few pints and stuff, mm-hmm. and and your mom's like kind of a little fun, little little bit extra mm-hmm. in parts. Although mm-hmm. I'd argue my mom is more extra than than your mom. I do love um, Jane. Yep, that's her. Um, and yeah, but they are both. Yeah, yeah. Quite, I think I think I think, I think we both so. have sisters who are older than us. Yes, um, I think they were. They went in the same year. But I think they were close. Yeah, they yeah. were a couple of years apart. I think. Yeah. Yeah, your mom's more tech savvy because your mom like she always likes my Instagram stuff and like. Yeah, but she doesn't know what stories. she's doing. But she's more she tech savvy. Instagram. My mom couldn't use Instagram. Trust really? Me. No, hell no. Okay, interesting. She was always yesterday. She was like, "Email? How do I get this email up?" And I'm like, "For fuck's sake, mum! You run a business for Christ's sake! <laughs> how do you not know how to get this email up? At least your mum go on Instagram and like like a phone. And she knows how to like like a story and sure, yeah. I, when I messaged yeah, your mum and said, "Can like you send? Sometimes. Can you send like a video message for the uh, hundred episode?" Like she had no issue in like sending me. Like I feel like my mum would be like, "I I wouldn't know how." Like yeah, okay. How yeah. do I do that? Like. like Rip out a Super 8. Yeah, get the Super 8. <laughs> send me the film reel. I'll get it processed. Um, today, guys, we are talking about tools. Yeah, we should probably talk about tools. We've not done the theme tune yet, have we? We've been talking no, for a while. No, that's no. our problem. I even said we, we have nothing to riffraff about, and now yep. we've over riffraffed. Uh, tools Ruid Series 2, Part 2. That's what we're doing today. 50, 50, 50. 50, 50, 50. 50, 50, 50. We are the 50% Doctor Who podcast. You can find us on YouTube at the 50% Doctor Who podcast YouTube channel where you can find clips from the episodes and you can find us on Twitter and Instagram to join the conversation at 50 Doctor. Connor has it out for me because I don't do post I? about the clips enough on Twitter, which is a totally yeah, I fair said, point. I said, um, do your, are your fingers, do your fingers stop working or something? Yeah. Like, that yeah. was funny. Do your fingers stop working? That's funny. That's okay. I, I, I can forget. I forgot to post um, the last clip yesterday. So I did the, I did the one I put up today and the one I did yesterday. Ridiculous. At the same time. I know. Uh, no, Poor I know. me. Mm. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Huh? So last week we talked about, I feel like I'm really going around in circles talking about tortured here because I just enjoy <laughs> shit talking. It's hard when you're reviewing 13 episodes instead of one. It is. Um, but we have to keep somewhat on track. Correct. Which you've done, we've done a shit job of so far. Yes. Uh, episode, uh, yeah, we talked about one to five last week. Uh, now, or earlier this week. Now we're going to talk about six or 13, starting with episode six called Reset, directed by Ashley Way and written by J.C. Wilshire. Martha Jones. Martha Jones is a little so bit... So cool. Torch- it's so weird. Like, Torchwood's never allowed to use Doctor Who music for some reason. But they like, use Martha's. They did get the little Martha. Do, do, do. It's kind of... It kind of is her theme, but kind of changed enough, I think, to not... Yeah, it's like there's copyright issues between the yeah, BBC. Yeah, weird. I don't know. It's either that or... Which is literally a meme we were saying before the show where like every time there's like a the scene where they run in, it's like... What's the word it's based off of? It's like um, here he comes on. It's like here he comes in the night on a tractor. It's from it's. It was first first done in um, countryside when yeah, Jack yeah. comes in on the tractor. Yeah. And yeah. the composer literally said on unclassified or what the fuck it's called declassified. It's like mm-hmm. I was really tired one night riding the school and I was like just started playing on the piano. Here, here he comes, comes the on a tractor. tractor. Something like that. Here, here he comes on a tractor. So every time it plays, like all, all I can hear is that shit. <laughs> Uh, reset. So yeah, this is the episode where Martha Jones yeah, gets it's involved. Reset time. Honestly, you wouldn't even know. Um, With no what? Sorry. <laughs> okay, dude. She's like not you. This is the only episode where she gets something to do. Right. The other two episodes, she has like three lines, and the rest of it, she's just in the background. Why the fuck did they expanded universe? Cool shit like that. You mm. know, like I love that. It's like oh, we're gonna bring on this companion for a few episodes. 
that's awesome, right? But why the fuck did they not... They and It's hard, because the episodes you were in, I think, um, for the most part, were really good. And I think that they were very Owen-focused, mm-hmm. and I thought that was amazing. But there is this whole thing where they're very Owen-focused, which means other characters have less to do, and the Doctor who is looking after Owen, or, or the Doctor who's replacing Owen, then really has fucking nothing to do. And she's like, not in these episodes at all. She gets a couple of things to do in the first episode. In in this one. In Reset. There's like people taking drugs and shit and she goes to... Also yeah, they're doing the like drugs. human trials. But I am... Um, they find out it's like doing with like weevils and stuff. And This is my least favourite episode of the season. Really? Mm. You're joking. Uh, I thought it was... I just wasn't interested. It was very standard Torchwood by this point. Really? I, Are you serious? I, I felt there was nothing to pull me in. Like, Martha was there and that was cool. Yeah. And, like, the scenes she were in were cool. But everything else was just, like, mundane. Mun- like, mundane. They've got to infiltrate this place. And, um, yeah, it just didn't... It didn't do anything. And, and there was, like, PS2 creatures. Like, CGI creatures at the oh, end. Oh, God, they looked terrible. And I just... Yeah, I just wasn't really there for it. I was, like, generic, generic villain... Nothing, yeah. I don't know. I found these three episodes like kind of interesting. It kind of reminded me of... Um, they get better each one. Season 10's like... You know, they did that similar thing. Which gets worse each one. Yeah. Yeah. They did the... What, the extremists, the uh, print in the world and... No, Light, Light of the Land. Land. Yeah. yeah. Remind me of that. Um, with Owen being my favorite character, it's a really an interesting story. And seeing Marf- Martha is really cool, especially after like... <laughs> What happened with like, you know, all the season three final. I'm sure for fans watching in like real time, mm. that would have been awesome. Yeah. Um, th- for me, there was too many times where like Jack would like, or someone would say, either Jack or Martha would say something that elaborated to the final, but they would never say it, but they kept saying shit about it. I'm like, well, if you're going to keep dropping mad hints, why don't you just tell her on the full story? Like, what, what do you mean by that? There was a time when he was like, I would trust Martha if the world was ending. Right. And believe me. Like foreshadowing I the, the did. finale. Like oh, it, oh it, foreshadowing. Like, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. It, like they're referencing yeah. so much that happened, but they would never say to the crew. Yeah. It happened so much. It started to bug me. Though I found this episode out, if we're treating this as almost like a trilogy or like the Owen trilogy, I found this episode <laughs> the most bearable. I found the next two quite... Mm. Um, this is... We've been... I enjoyed the start of this season a bit more than you. We've been roughly on the same page. This is where I think we're gonna spread okay. spread our wings and fly away. To quite quote literally, there's massive, uh, there's massive there's like, uh, what are they like dragonflies? I don't know. It looks I really awful. Don't know. I don't care. And I'm I a- get, yeah, go on. Oh no, you, you say. Mine's a better conclusive statement. So you go. Excuse you. You don't no. know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying that my what I'm gonna say makes more sense to say at the end of the conversation. Oh, okay. Is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, I was going to say that, like, um, I understand, like, in real life, when people get shot, it can be just from, like, random ass people, and, like, it doesn't normally always make sense, but, like, for Owen just to get shot by right, some yes. random ass, like... Yeah, sure, cool. Doctor, it was just kind of, so out the blue, to the extent where, like, it affected the rest of the season so much, especially in the next two episodes, mm-hmm. and, like, he saved Martha's life, and, like, it was such a boring, like, it just unsignificant character mm. which might have been know. the point i, I think that was the, like i just said yeah i think you know you don't know who you're gonna get shot by i guess but look yeah. at rick grimes that's right mm. uh what i was gonna say was i have nothing more to say about this episode <laughs> <laughs> i'm so okay i was so uninterested by this episode what man. did you think about the one thing i did know so is that like we get an explanation for martha being in unit in season four because um she got a uh, she got highly recommended from the highest source ever. Fine. Okay, moving on. <laughs> okay. It was just the most ordinary fine episode. For me, it is a certified five out of ten. And I gave and it. And I think that's being generous. Well, what you do give you give it a five? It? Yeah, because it works. And my thing is always if it works as an episode, it gets five. But it's like if it doesn't work and there's something's fundamentally wrong with the episode, it's when I teeter below five. I only give it a six point five. Right, okay. All right. Well, here's where things are going to get a little bit crazy. Okay. Right? Okay. Moving on to episode seven. Yes. Dead Man Walking, Correct. which uh, is directed by Andy Goddard and written by Matt Jones. Probably the episode I was most excited for this season. Yeah. Because um, I just, I remember being like, 
Oh, there's a whole episode set in this like warm hospital and you know the Grim Reaper's coming for him. Death. And then I watched it and I was like, it's like 15 minutes tacked on at the end of the episode. Uh, but that being said, everything before that is also really cool. I like seeing Owen dealing with his immortality and it's not immortality in the same way that Jack can still live a life. It's immortality as in like, what can he do now? Like he can't, you know, can't drink. He can't have sex. He can't do any of the things that, which are like the most generic, even like like testosterone filled boy shit, but like any of, any of that stuff. And, um, yeah, I, I think it, he had that awesome shot, like it was like the hangover shot where it's got like the the chest cam where he's like going yes. through the clubs and yes, we love the hangover shot. And yeah, it, it's fun chest. with Jack when he's like yacking on next to Jack all the in Guinness, the prison under the under the prison, all the Guinness. That was great yeah. fun. Um, and looked it looked good. Like you could so tell it was yeah, like so somebody classic. put a pipe oh, behind his mouth. Oh, yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it was still a lot of fun, and I had a lot of fun this episode. The Tosh stuff was good with it. Um. And this is the episode where he's King of the Weevils, right? I thought Correct. that was yeah. a really cool scene as well. King of the Weevils, yeah. It had some interesting things to oh, comment the, the other on. Glove. But the other glove. I, mean, I was about to say, yeah. yeah. So they went and got the other resurrection glove because there was that line in the last episode, where, or sorry, last season where it was like, gloves come in pairs. Yeah. How did Jack find the second glove? He went to, I, I he believe... he went to a church, but like... He went to, I think it was a... Oh, look, tell me if I'm wrong, but in the second last episode, he like also gets like a card reading. And the card yeah. shows, uh, I think the little girl is the same girl from that episode. And like they had, because they had the same cards, like the same card with Jack. It's dressed as like a, a knight. It's like a si- same card. Anyway, he goes to her and she tells him where to fucking find it. And he goes into like a church full of like weevils, takes the, takes the, um, the glove and then uses it on Owen. But he lives, I guess. Mm-hmm. He lives. It is a bit like not explained and stuff. It's not really explained. He lives, I guess. I don't know. And look, by the end of the season, doesn't necessarily go anywhere. But for the purpose of this trilogy, um, I think, I think it's good. I think it. Uh, what even is like the plot plot of this this part? That's like, the thing. This is what I mean. Like I, this trilogy is kind of like it kind of all blends into one for me because I was when we brought this episode up just then. I was like, wait, what the hell happened in it? Right, no, what, like the Grim Weepo is coming. I get, and now, to get yeah, like now I get that. Deaths but, or whatever. And then like the next deaths. episode, he's on the roof. But I'm like, I'm also like, man, these episodes, especially the last two of the trilogy, they kind of like, they kind of just blend together. I think, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy when they're in the hospital. I wish, I think it should have been the whole episode almost in the hospital because I, I really enjoyed that. And it felt kind of like a rush tacked on bit. 100%, um, yeah. But Owen... At the end, uh, he is like acting his chops off against this Grim Reaper thing, and it just looks shit, which is mm. a shame. Like he's it like dancing channel. around with it, and it's like da 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 da. He's trying to like, yeah, he's trying to. He talks to the kid leukemia, and it's a it's actually a really beautiful scene where like, yeah, that is great. And the kid's just like, you know, like we tried it once, it's not working, and like you know, you. I really felt like I really felt like, hey, Owen is a doctor, like he actually yeah. cares, and they really grow the character this yeah. season. I really thought that it worked, and then you can really tell he was an actor. Uh, sorry, a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think, I think his name's a, a Bern Gorman or something. I think That's he did right. such a really good job. Like, yeah, yeah I actually believed that yeah. he was a doctor. Like, one of the things that Owen says all the time is that he doesn't give a fuck about anything. But the fact that he's a doctor and he gets to like save people, and I really believed him in that scene. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, but you're right, he does get a dance of a CGI Grim Reaper, which looks awful. Yes, man. I'm sorry. Like, I don't like to shit on effects, but like the effects this season were just like so poor. I remember as a kid being so scared by that. Oh, me too. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I was so, like, oh. I guess it did its job, but it did its job at a time. Doesn't age as well. Um, I think there's a lot of potential here that wasn't necessarily tapped into by the Grim Reaper chasing him thing. Like, I think it could have been a real spooky episode. It could have been, and they didn't quite get there. And it just hunted down people in the hospital, not even like on the streets. It yeah, just, it just took people in. the Well, hospital. I like the claustrophobic aspect of the hospital and stuff. But out of ten, Connor, what are you going to? Well, give? Well, I would say it's the best place to go and find dead people. What people are you going to give Dead Man Walking out of ten? Connor? This is episode eight. Yep, seven, seven, six, six. You're going to give it a six. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it a seven. Um, yeah, Martha enjoyed it more than much. last week. But Martha not... gets old of these horrible prosthetics. Yeah, prosthetics looks terrible, and she doesn't do a single thing all episode, other than like 
<laughs> she has like one scene where she's really passive aggressive with him for no reason. And I was like, okay. I mean, I get it. You're dead. Get yeah, over no, you're it. supposed to be dead. I'm a doctor. Like, and, and I'm like, okay. Fine, Martha. I do simp Freema. Um, Freema's great. Uh, episode eight. Does she do anything in this one, Aiden? A, a day, day in, in the, the dead. dead. Mate, <laughs> she does even less. Yeah. Also like directed by Andy she's Goddard. Slowly, she's slowly just starting to do less. And her. written by Joseph Lidster. The only thing Martha does in, in episode eight is leave. <laughs> That's the only thing. Here's the weird thing. Like, it's the same director as last episode, but like, it has different writers every time. Very similar, again, to that season 10 three-parter. But yeah. like, one director's different. And it's like, I don't get why they do stuff like that. Well, that's fine. They're like different plots. It makes me scratch my head a bit, though. But I, I'll be honest, mm-hmm. really, really enjoyed this episode. Me too. I thought you were saying they blended together and they were boring. They did. Right. And they are boring. But I respect the fact that the whole story on the roof was more interesting. Okay, sure. Yes, it did blend together. And yeah, it was boring, but... Right. Okay. I kind of like it. I, I think it was an interesting way to tell a story. It was not But it was boring. Way. Okay. I think... Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, big thing mentally to be talking about two people on a, on a roof. Um, but also like beyond that, like I thought the intro was great. Like he's so done with mm-hmm. life and he's so like angry mm-hmm. and upset with life. And he's like, you know, all them sequences of him and they're a little bit over dramatic, but you know, like sprinting along the dock and jumping into the water. That stuff's great. I like that. Yeah. Um, and all that stuff I think is, is really fantastic. And I like the idea that he's going on this mission, a one-man mission to the house that he can do because he's not going to get picked up by the by heat. sensors and all heat that. sensors. Yeah. And he finds a bit of a purpose with that guy at the end, mm. talking to that guy. Um, and then that stuff with the girl I thought was really, really tragic. And um, I don't know. I was just gripped. I thought it was a great character piece. And, mm. and Torchwood hasn't really had many character piece episodes. Nah. And this, for me, really was that. And I, I thought it was uh, the bread and butter of a good TV story. I like... I, I, I agree. I like I like what you said. But I just think, like, the whole subplot, I felt like, just didn't work for me. I didn't... I didn't care enough to be invested. And, like, when it kind of ended, I was just like, yeah, whatever. I was more invested on, like, the, the whole rooftop thing. And even at the end, when mm. you see, like... Um, he finds her on the roof and it wasn't that he wanted to jump. He wanted to save her. Yeah. And I liked how he did take that. Like he did take the... Um, I didn't quite understand the shell thing. It was like so... It's hope. <laughs> it's hope. It's, it's hope. hope. It's hope. But yeah, I did Rebellions are built on hope. Uh, rebellions are built on hope, Jin Erso. Mm. Aiden loves his gin. Mm. I didn't I care for that love fucking... my gin tonight. Huh? I'm loving my gin tonight. My gin o'clock. Well, it is gin o'clock. Gin Slay Erso sister. o'clock. What were you saying? Um... But I just thought it was like a pretty subpar um, subplot, if you will. I just fine. didn't. I didn't care for it. Yeah, it was fine. It was fucking fine. Fucking fine, Connor. Again, with Owen being like my favorite character, when rewatching this for the first time, as again I watched a few, uh, watching it all the way through, I really liked these episodes because I love love Owen's character. Mm-hmm. But I felt like they had not enough to do to warrant mm-hmm. a free episode kind of plot line See, which I again do. kind of goes nowhere i guess i think they went places in this three-parter but then it's like they just kind of stopped yeah i just think that like erin gets little mentions in like the next episodes with like um owen's like you know tosha drop dead gore just take it from me and like the fucking the monster from the second the next episode like doesn't pick up on owen being like human and stuff mm-hmm. and but apart from that and i noticed he had the bandage from when he got like the the cut and stuff from the scalpel yeah. mm-hmm. he had that the whole time but I felt like the trilogy for me was a little bit lackluster and they had right. cool ideas like the whole rooftop thing. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't really. There you go. Tragic. Yeah. Tragic. Um, okay. Well, I enjoyed it. Just whilst we're on the topic of gin and gin ursos. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about The Last Jedi, don't you? <laughs> oh, fuck. No. <laughs> what were you going right, to say? Um, oh, I, hate, cause I, feel like, I feel like a lot of people that uh, watch our show don't watch Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know. Surely not. So maybe we'll keep it relatively brief. You want to talk um, about Andor? Well, uh, in one t- in one sentence, uh, I've always been a fan of the Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Connor never has been, but he's just watched it and told me that he kind of is. Can yeah. you can you give me a sentence just to summarize where you're at with it now? You finished it. Well, my sentence is first of all, um, I've only been able to rewatch half of it on my rewatch because I did right. have to watch all of Torchwood. 
Oh. But I did watch half of it, and well, I have stopped at the whole Canto bite thing. But after watching the trilogy as a whole, and especially watching it straight after Force Awakens, I really can understand the choices now. Mm-hmm. Um, but you might have to come back to me next week when I've watched right. the whole thing. Okay, we'll do but, that. But we'll- although I will say I've enjoyed it so much more than I ever have. Sure, cool, that's good. Though weird choices, but I respect it. Well, we'll come back to that one next week. We'll put a pin mm-hmm. in that one for now. Uh, Disney Plus has put out a trailer for Andor, the new Star Wars TV show. I haven't show. seen it, so... You've not seen the trailer for it. So you well, can talk about this it. This conversation is so irrelevant. <laughs> what were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to say, you know, I've been a notorious shit talker of Star Wars TV and just Star Wars and Disney products recently. Uh-huh. Gotta say, Andor looks fucking great. Okay. I think I will definitely be watching it. Like, Kenobi, I was always like, will I watch it, won't I? And then I watched a few episodes... Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I was pointless, and yeah, I didn't watch it was. until like it finished. I went and watched it all, but and like I didn't watch Boba Fett or anything. I'm trying to be more selective of what I watch rather than just funding the big fucking mouse prick. I totally um, agree. But uh, I watched the Andor trailer, and I thought this is great. This is what you know they should be making. It's stuff that clearly has something to say, um, but also like clearly has effort put into it production wise. Um, it's not they didn't use the volume at all. Which, it sucks because I think the volume is such a great piece of technology. But I think it is just, like, over-relied upon now. Mm. Because it's, like, definitely better than green screens. Obviously, it means actors can react uh, against the environments around them. And also, you know, you don't have the shit, you know, the look from Captain Jack touching the monster and meat. You know, like, that they blend... It's probably more of a COVID to... thing as well with, like, Kenobi and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it also does mean that all those landscapes in the volume still have to be made CGI wise. Right. So like it is, you're still looking at like artificial CGI landscapes that could have just been, they could have just gone out to shoot. Um, and yeah, they've, they've done this all, uh, like I'd say practically in quotation marks, obviously there's a fuck ton of VFX work and stuff. And you know, some of it, it's a trailer. So it's always hard to say some of it is like still a little bit ropey, Mm. like a lot of the Disney shows, but a lot better than a lot of the stuff we've had recently. Um, and I just think, yeah, it doesn't feel like a Star Wars show. And I think that's the thing that Star Wars has needed to do for a while is to be like, you know, it's a show that's not about a legacy character. It's not like the the music for the trailer. There's no Star Wars music in it. It's this really cool, like just dark tune to the trailer. And it's really awesome. Um, right. And I, I'll be there for Andor on day one. I'm, I'm actually excited for Star Wars. What I will say as a comment, I totally agree with you about not just like finding the mouse and trash because like I agree. I think this is the first, um, I think first Marvel movie I haven't seen at the movies. It was was four. Yes, same. I had enough of it. I'm over it. I've had enough. Every time I would go, the last four times I went, I'm like, it was just not worth it. Not worth it. So I didn't go and um, I'm really proud of my choice to not go Mm. because it's just like, you know what really upsets me? I saw this like um, I didn't watch that actual YouTube video, but I saw clips of it. This um, uh, like you know, you know, do those like scene breakdowns for like Family Fair and stuff. It was mm-hmm. um, Taika Waititi and um, uh, was it uh, Trisha uh, Thompson? Is it Valkyrie? Yeah, Valkyrie Trisha, Trisha Thompson. Gale? Yeah, whatever her name is. That sounds about right. Um, anyway, um, yeah, they were just like publicly shitting on the VFX, which I've heard I are have terrible. Heard. And Trisha, Trisha Thompson, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. T- yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, since then, a lot of info, a lot of news has come out Upset about... me a lot. ...poorly treated VFX artists and stuff, which is a, a big uh, shame and definitely is like Marvel is so reliant on VFX mm. that they should be praising them. I know, it really upset me. Because they really, really wouldn't me. be doing the stuff they're doing without them. These are two rich fucks who don't care and they're publicly humiliating... People who work oh, so hard. Oh, and, and Trish. Yeah, right. like they were publicly humiliating them. So they were like, this shot comment. looks really bad. And yeah, they were laughing okay. about it. Like, hang on, first of all, you were promoting a movie. That's weird. Like it's kind of strange. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, there were heaps of people in interviews say, it, like even like Christian Bale and stuff like, we showed a lot of stuff that was not even in it. And I heard that, I heard they have like a four hour cut or something, which obviously like, when it gets to editing, it's not going to be four hours, but yeah, that's it's going to be edit, it's going to be a bit strange. longer than what strange to things is was, like. Why didn't you cut them down? But yeah, go it's going to be yeah. longer than what you got in the um, theatrical cut. But mm-hmm. like, um, it upsets me because like you know there are these just rich fucks who are just like you know and you know they're 
I've heard a lot, like you said, I've heard a lot of people reaching out. Obviously, you can't believe everything you hear, but I've heard it's just like horrible working conditions. And um, I think, you know, everyone looks at this whole Comic Con thing and like all this stuff coming out. Everyone's like, this is so great, it's so exciting. But it's like the VFX artists are just sweating. Like, how are we going to make that? Like, there's other people as well who are like, you know, never going to get like the light of day. And it's just, it's like not worth your time. Yeah, I agree. I'm um, so keen for um, us and someone like Jordan Peele, who's so amazing. Oh, nope. Do you mean nope? Nope. Yeah. Uh, nope, sorry, yeah. Like Jordan Peele. We love Jordan Peele. He's mm-hmm. amazing. And yeah. um, I'm seeing Black Phone very soon. Yeah, I think just like seeing... Like Scott Derrickson a lot. Seeing other stuff he's really a Marvel cool. director for one film. Yeah. Um, yeah. He left. He had, he had the sense to leave. And I respect that about mm-hmm. him. He was like, you're not going to give me my vision? Fine, I won't stay. Mm-hmm. Respect. I respect and attack that. Um yeah yeah i think i'm gonna go and see i think nick and i are gonna go see what the crawdads sing is that the new one i don't oh, think okay. it's got the best reviews but it's still like yeah go for it fuck me i'd rather watch that than, <laughs> than any of this shit go um, to lunar on um yeah on monday to go see uh black phone and i'm so keen like well i was gonna ask but i was like you know after our monday uh double feature of no please ask away of uh I doctor who book. you would like fuck this is so shit on a monday night going to luna i'm a i'm a sad yeah but kim um, lives like 15 minutes away from it so right. it's an easy drive well they got a a double feature on august 8th monday august 8th mm-hmm. of everything everywhere all at once and men you want to go with me well i just want to go with someone yeah i'll go because I, I haven't seen i haven't seen those movies yeah neither and I, like both of them are kind of towards the end of their theatrical run in fact everything everywhere has yeah of course yeah now i'll go um, i'll go definitely all right let's do it look i mean like the monday we went i had tafe like that day i right. just started and you know it was a bit of a bad time but yeah no if it's a monday night normally like it's not really an issue at all. i love how um we spend this podcast discussing, just, our discussing how we're gonna hang out like, yeah well you know <laughs> people are gonna know where we're gonna be and what we're doing oh uh, fuck me all right um <laughs> <laughs> something borrowed season two episode nine. Oh god what a banger the wedding episode Fuck, I love episode. directed by ashley way and written phil by everyone's ford! favorite it's phil ford yes! yay dreamland into um, the dalek Wallace of mars that's where you know him from yo we love it um, oh god sounds like you enjoyed it already fuck i love this episode it's a lot of fun isn't it's it? so dumb and fun uh-huh Oh, I love it. Slay sister. You're pregnant. You're pregnant. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Backtracking. We never you know, we never did scores for a day in the death. Oh shit. Okay. Just to hold to hold your excitement. Nine. Yes, I gave it. No, it's episode eight. I gave it an eight. Six. You gave it a six. Oh, that's rough. One well, thumb down from Connor. <clears throat> uh, All right. Something borrowed. Something new. Something blue. The TARDIS. TARDIS. Rivers TARDIS book. You may kiss the bride. Uh, drunk giraffe. Easy now. Dude, so dumb. <laughs> Horny Muffet. Uh, if you want to see our Big Bang review, do that. Something borrowed. Tell me what uh, you thought. Gwen's wedding episode. She's pregnant. I think that's a hilarious plot You're pregnant. Point. You're pregnant. You're pregnant. I'm Welsh. Yeah. <laughs> You're pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I think it's another like Reese classic adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun for Gwen. I thought all the cast were great. Mm. Good to see Tosh and Gwen getting some scenes together. Owen falls in the background a little bit, which is fine because he's had three episodes where he's all in the foreground. Makes that sense. Happens. Uh, Yanto still kind of in the background. Jack gets some stuff to do. Weird scene when Gwen kind of <laughs> wants to quiz Jack on, <laughs> on on her wedding day, but that's just you may kiss the bride. Bit fucking weird. Um, but yeah, it's fun and it's ah oh, the best. My favorite part. And I've always loved this. Is Jack bursting into a room and going like. Stand back, you fucking bitch, or something to go to, to my mother, to Reese's mum. He's like, "What are you say to my mother?" And he's Man. like, "It's an alien." And she's like, "I'm not an alien." And then they realise that she's not the alien. Yeah, it's still GPK and, does. And Reese yeah. is him. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. I yeah, think this great. episode was a much needed like bit of fun. Definitely after yeah. that free episode kind of drag. Yeah, it's well placed in the Man, season. Man, it's sure. so fucking. I can't express this enough. It is such dumb fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm there for, literally down to the cliche of does anyone have any reason why they shouldn't be these people should mad? Stop the way! Stop the way! It's so yeah. cliche. And, and I that love it. it wasn't hers. <laughs> Dude, know? it's so yeah. good. It literally it's a good. guy goes off to get a blowy and gets his like <laughs> entire like 
underneath his Wedding stomach. Wedding episodes of off. any show are we just are so much fun. Hey? They are. They They're are. so good. They are. They're, it we is, stand wedding episodes. It's such a, a whack idea of a character where like the, the male will like bite someone and then they'll have the baby and then the female will come and like rip the baby out. Yeah. It's so ridiculous and mm. I love it. The fact that Gwen just rocks up next day pregnant and like has to tell her parents or Reese's parents and her friends who saw her the night before and they're like, how much did we drink last night? And I'm like, that just happens to just not... They're just like, oh, we must have just been pissed. Like, yeah. I love that. I like how it starts on Gwen's hen night as well. I think that's a lot of fun. It is. It's it's actually such a funny episode and I, and I love it. It's just... It's such goofy ridiculous fun Reese at the end with a fucking chainsaw mm-hmm. Jack yeah, just gets a massive and it, gun and it out. runs out yeah, that, mm. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so and Jack does, he's just gun. like he's like oh, I'll fucking get you yeah. fuck I just, <laughs> yeah literally I love that it's so it's just so fucking silly excellent and excellent. it's so fun and I'm like damn am I like glad this episode exists in this season because I feel like we kind of needed it mm-hmm. and like if it wasn't, if it didn't, like, if it didn't, like, if it tried to take itself too seriously, I'd be like, this episode fucking sucks. But it, it knew it didn't. Even, like, Gwen, like, goes to, like, she's like, no, Jack, I'll sacrifice myself. And she's walking up, mm-hmm. holding the bouquet of yeah. flowers, and then slips her gun through it and shoots the fucking alien. And it's so, so fucking good, silly. Man. And I loved every second of it. I think this was definitely, like, they knew that they'd just done three episodes heavily focused on death. Yeah, and I, I think like they were aware to list things up. So I keep scratching my eyes. I think I have like eyelashes on the inside of my eyelids right now. I just got pink eye confirmed. That's it. Ugh. So annoying. You know when you get eyelashes like eyelashes in both eye? eyes at once. I think it's my left eye. I think my right eye is just being a fucking moron. Sometimes Your eyes like can that. get really irritable. Like if you and if you fucking keep eyes. doing that, it can. It Who can... invented them? Honestly, uh, out of ten, Our something borrowed. Savior. God. Something borrowed out of 10. Episode 10. 9. 9. <laughs> I gave an 8. Uh, okay, I gave it 7.5. Oh, you gave it 8.5. Wow. It's so fun. It is fun. I'm giving it's it so a 7.5. It's yeah. just so fun. And I love Phil Ford. I can say, yeah, Phil, just what a welcome, <laughs> what a welcome boy. Even though I feel like um, I'm I'm 90% sure most of the brilliance of Wars and Mars was probably Russell. Mm. Though I'm glad he's there. He's part of it. I'm glad he's, he's there. Part of it. I'm glad well, he's two there. Two at work. What can I say? Yeah, exactly. I'm excited because Phil does a lot of Sarah Jane, right? He does do quite a lot of Sarah Jane, along with um, um, Gareth Roberts. So, mm-hmm. but he does quite a lot of. Um, oh, he was a uh, he was the head writer and co-producer from the second series of the Sarah Jane Adventures. We love Phil. We do love Phil. He doesn't do anything these days, which is sad. I checked him out. He does nothing. Maybe we'll get him back with RTD2. He's retired. I'd love a mixture of RTD2 to be like old writers and new writers. Oh, God. I think like... Don't get me started. I love... I, I want more new than old. But just once or twice a season. Yeah. Just bring on like a Mark Gaddis and a Phil Ford. And a Steven For an Moffat. episode each, you know? <laughs> yeah. Do you reckon we'd ever get... Do you reckon we'd ever get like a Euro Slin or a... I hope Graham so. Harper. I think it's possible. I Does, do think it's possible. I know Eurosyn's still working, but is Graham Harper still working or is he retired? He's pretty old now. Because he was quite old, wasn't he? He was old when he was doing like this Doctor Who because he directed Classic Who back in the day. Yeah. Like, um, but, you know, nothing's impossible. He's still very much invested in Doctor Who. He's quite often does those, does those uh, behind the sofas, you know, on the Classic Who box sets where okay. they get old companions and doctors and directors to sit and watch the episodes. He does quite a few of those. Okay, nice. Um, so he's obviously still invested in Doctor Who and still loves it. So, uh, you know, it's not impossible, but... I'll stop it. You know, I'll he's an old guy it. these days, so... I'll stop it. I'll stop it, love. love uh, it. From Out of the Rain is episode 10, which is directed by Jonathan Fox Bassett. Cool name. And Go written Foxy. by Peter J. Hammond, came out on the 12th of March, 2008. You love this episode. I used to, and I think this was one of my iTunes ones, one of the okay. ones I had on iTunes and used to watch like on plane flights and stuff. Yeah. Um, this is an episode that I was really enjoying for the first 10 to 15 minutes. And then I was like, fuck, I really need to get on with some work, but I really need to keep okay. doing this. And so this is the episode where I was, um, I was actually like booking, like catering food and, and stuff for uh, a project whilst I was like doing it. So I wasn't really paying attention. Whenever right. something big was happening, I tried to stop for like two minutes and watch it. But um, I'd say I I probably don't have a lot to say about this episode because of that, which is unfortunate and kind of unfair. 
for the episode. But yeah. um, I enjoyed what I saw. It felt cheaper than I remember it feeling. Um, and I really liked the ending where they saved just one life. Like, I thought that, that was very tortured and dark. But it's still one of those things where it's like, we saved one life. You know, there's there's a movie coming out called um, 13 Lives, which is directed by Ron Howard. Ron Howard, um, he's back. Is, he's back, baby. Solos, Ron Howard. Which is based off of, um, you know, the life event. And there's a great documentary I've seen called The Rescue based on it okay. as well, which is about, remember, there was like the 12 members of a uh, Taiwanese football team and their coach. So 13 of them got trapped in a cage, in, in a cage, in a cave like five years this, ago. I might have done. When they have to go into the... Divers have to go in yeah. and save them and stuff. Um, and, you know, there's this whole thing of, like, uh, you know, saving one of those lives is, like, better, like... Because the odds were so far against them. They were like, there's not a chance we're getting any of these guys out. But they were like, if we can save one, then that's, you know, that's one amazing life saved. Mm. Um, and so I kind of like that with this ending. That's such an incredible story, though. That is... Um, it is, yeah. Do you know much about how they got them kids out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you told me about it. I don't know if it was on the show or off, or, or off the show, but you told me the whole thing. Yeah. They literally put them to sleep. Yeah. They injected drugs into them so they would like, sleep. Because they, they knew they'd freak out. Yeah, they'd freak out going through these tunnels for like yeah. an hour yeah. underwater. Yeah. Crazy stuff, man. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm keen to see it. I've heard Ron it's Howard's a, making a film about that. Yeah, I've heard it's a good film. The The first reviews are out, so I'm uh, Crikey, nice. yeah, keen to see it because I, I think the documentary was good. Maybe a little bit mundane in some of its execution, but I think it was still still gripping. It was like after Solo, I wanted to do a real story. Yeah, well, it's very like uh, Ron Howard. Like he loves uh, stories of hope and uh, humanity, you know. Um, and no, he, you know, this is called sorry. Thirteen Lives, and he did Apollo Thirteen, um, which oh, yeah. is obviously like you know three guys lost completely out, and they stand no chance of getting back. Like yeah. that's the stuff he loves. So he oh, sorry sorry he directed a film last year with. Um, with uh, it was on a Netflix film it was like that hillbilly one that got really controversial. Um, with who plays Lois Lane again? She's in um, she's in um, uh, that film with Jamie Renner, the one you really like, Arrival. Um, Ginger, not Bryce Dallas Howard, the other one, the more successful one. <laughs> you know, her. just I'm just, just from Arrival. Are you talking about Emily Blunt? No, Arrival. That's with um, that's with Jamie Renner. You know, well, you said Arrival. Arrival is um, Denise. Is it Denise? Um, is that his name? The guy that does like June and and Blade Runner. I think so. Yeah, the one with Jeremy Renner in it. I think it's. Yeah, Jer- I'm pretty sure it's name? Jeremy Renner. The Rana. one who fucking plays um, uh, <sighs> Lois Lane. Doctor Google. Yeah, Doctor Google. That's it. The one with Jeremy Renner in it. And um, what's her name? Oh, it's not Emily Blunt in Arrival. Oh, Amy it's... Adams. Amy Adams. Forgive yeah. me, Father, for I've seen. John Howard did a film with Amy is Adams. Emily where... Is Emily is. I could have sworn Emily Blunt was the main character in that movie. And I've seen that movie. And every time I think of that movie... Emily Blunt is just a discounted Amy Adams. No, don't talk about my girl like that. (laughs) Don't talk about my girl Emily Blunt like that. Jesus. Ron Howard do be... Ron Howard do be that classic, like, Hollywood... Hat. He's so yeah, but he's With like and love. He's got a good heart. Like he's a he nice has guy. Got, he has he's got a, a good heart, guy. but also I'm like you know, come on, Ron. Like give me a break. Like if you want me to sit down and watch your trash for like two hours, you got to convince <laughs> me a little bit. You got to give me, got to give me solo up. You know. <laughs> All I, right, I've seen solo. Okay, give me some quick thoughts. We got, we got to get through these next few quite quick. From out of the rain. I just thought it was shit. Honestly, I was, <laughs> I was bored. What do you want me to say? It was boring as hell. I never liked it as a kid. I thought it was a, a, a cool... Co- I like how you saw Jack on like the film. Yeah, real, And he was like shooting himself. I just love that spooky stuff. I it thought. is spooky. Yeah. Believe me. Didn't go very far. Lots of rain. Lots of rain. Great. Whatever. I, I love an old spooky cinema. Me too. It's I Luna. It's a great one. setting. It is Luna. I'd love to film like a, a spooky film in Luna. I think that'd be incredible. They charge you good rates. They're like, we know what independent films cost. We yeah. play them all the time. Luna is... I love Luna, but they are quite um, wanky. They get Perth's biggest film festival take, is, is done at Quite Luna. wanky. Um, Rev, and <laughs> I've like, heard... We're not paying you back, Aiden. I know a lot of people that have um, tried worked to... for that film festival at Luna, oh, and okay. they've said that they were uh, like treated like shit the whole time. And, really? And yeah, not by Luna, by the film festival, but the film festival is very closely attached to Luna, and it's like... Tea. Yeah, great cinema, but a bit of bit of tea attached tea. there. Um, all right, so you didn't like from out the rain? Nah, I thought it was really boring. Fine, fitting. Yep, because that's you. What boring? Yeah. Thanks, Aiden. 
my lovely co-host, <laughs> who is so kind to me all the time. What are you going to rate from out the rain out of 10? Uh, I'm going to give it a four. Fuck! Sorry, that probably peaked like shit on the mic. Really? Well, I'm sorry, but it was just... You know, I watched it last night. I just come back from the pub. I was not in the mood. Okay, I wasn't in the mood. Don't worry, I got good. I got good scores for next three. Like I'm gonna give it a seven point five because I enjoyed it and there's a nostalgic aspect. Yeah, but yeah, you have the nostalgia aspect. Watching it on iTunes. You know, I went on holiday with this episode once as well. Great. And I still don't feel like I got nostalgia aspect from it. That's me. amazing. Adrift. I'm just gonna turn my mic off. <laughs> I'll just go <laughs> fucking die. We get into the second hour of this podcast, and it's when we get salty. Adrift. Um, Hold on. Ruth Jones is in it, which is really cool. Season two, episode eleven. It's called Adrift. It is written by Mount Everest. Kidding. It's directed what? by <laughs> What? Mount Everest. I even fucked up the joke. Mount it's directed Everest. by Mark Everest, and it's written by everyone's favorite writer, Chris, Chris Chibnall. Chibnall. Came out on the nineteenth of March, two thousand and eight. Hey. Um, it's the episode where there is a uh, disappearances. And it's when people go through the rift. Yeah, the rift doesn't just send things down. It takes people too. Which makes sense. It Isn't does that make just sense. basic, like, like in Primeval, like you can go back through the anomalies that people come... Yeah, well, that, I anyways. it was a smart idea. Oh, it's clever and a, and and a really... I liked it a lot. Really good I episode. I liked Ruth Jones a lot, so it was really cool to see her in it. Aiden's favourite writer. Ruth, was that Ruth Jones and yep. Gar- from Gavin and Stacey? Correct, Mando. Oh my god. Aiden's favourite. Wait, Jones. she can actually act? Fuck you, she's so good as Nessa. She's great. You just hate fucking. You just hate Gavin, Gavin and, Stacey, and Stacey. And you're yeah, like, that is Ruth Jones. You're like me with Stranger Things. You're wrong. Okay, you're <laughs> wrong. And at least I can admit I'm wrong. You just hate I just think, the greatest, one of the greatest. I just think well, Gavin and Stacey's so unbelievably average. Um, the Office UK is the best comedy written ever. Sure, that's fine. Gavin Stacey, I thought it was okay, but... maybe second. No. Really? Above like okay. the in-betweeners and that shit? What, The Office or Gavin Stacey? Gavin and Stacey. You'd put Gavin and Stacey on top of the in-betweeners? Probably, really? Probably, yeah. Really? Probably, yeah. What the fuck? Probably, yeah. Gavin Probably. and Stacey's a piece of shit compared to like that kind of thing. In your opinion, to me, yes, a lot of to people, my opinion, a lot of people love say, it. I know, I do know. It. I am very aware and that a lot of people love Gavin and Stacey, I think, and, and I I'm in a minority here. I oh know. Oh my god, that. that's literally. I found your Stranger Things. Fuck. I found your Stranger Things. I think it's different though, because I think like I really think Gavin and Stacey's shit. Whereas like Stranger Things, you're like, like it's fine. You know, it's kind of yeah. how you feel about it. But strange, but. Gavin and Stacey, I think the first season's perfectly fine. Okay. And I think it's, like, fun. And uh, there is some, whilst very stereotypical, uh, you know, there's fun elements to the plot. Uh-huh. And I just think they juiced it for two and three. Fair and enough. there was nothing new to add. The, the humour very quickly faded away. James Corden became more and more <laughs> James Corden. Um, and I just think, like, there I... was just nothing interesting. And they did the Christmas special, and I was like... I love the Christmas special. It was just not made well. Look... Like, I, th- look, I look look I I'm rewatched looking. I rewatched um both In Between and Gavin and Stacey this year, which I think I do every like maybe two years. Mm-hmm. And I really liked it. I really like both of them. I think I can switch my brain off with, with Gavin and Stacey, but I actually sure. think it is a well written show. Like I actually do think it is well written. See, I really like I really don't think it is. Wow, okay. I really think it's like corny dialogue and I think the acting shit. I think it probably look, I think I think personally, like the the dialogue was like meant to be corny. What like I don't when know, characters I think... are just talking, it's meant to just mm. not sound real. <laughs> like, uh, really, I f- I think it does sound real. That's interesting. I don't know. I think look clearly, I had a different experience to with it than you did. I'd be interested if anyone who watches the show loves it or hates it. Cause... I'm sure a lot of people love because I know it's yeah. a, it's a big show it's for the time. Massive, yeah. and that's fine. And I can respect that. I think yeah, me watching it like two years ago. Well after the hype. Yeah, the show. yeah. No, you, yeah, you would definitely yeah. go in with a different mind. I mean, I was watching it when it was airing, so... It's like it's like how when I watched Spider-Man, sense. which I still think is a, is, a, is a really good film, but yeah. people think the first Spider-Man is like the bee's knees. And for me, watching yeah. it without that nostalgia, it's like, it's yeah, like it's a fun Aiden superhero hates movie. hates Howard Stern, so... I don't know, even know who that thing. fucker is, man. I really don't even know. <laughs> That's the joke. Jesus, Aiden. Do you not even go with jokes on the show anymore? <laughs> no, I forget. I just get passionate about my dislike oh, for yeah, Gavin and Stacey. I apologize if okay. I disgruntled you with 
my Gavin and Stacey opinions. No, that's okay. I, mean, I know you, you, you very much like the show. I and do. I, and I don't want to be that guy that through my dislike of the show takes that away from you. Am I that guy with Stranger Things? No, I don't think you ever come off Yeah, uh, overly, exactly. You just come off like you don't care and that's perfectly fine because some like shows, that. like I do not care for what Marvel's doing at the moment and that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I might sit back a little bit because like, this mic back. is going to kill itself. But okay, all right. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So right. Let's quickly. Uh, this is episodes going. Oh on. yeah, drift was. Okay, I was saying Ruth Jones is really good in it, and I thought the episode was really yeah, but good she's and not dark. Giving Gavin and Stacey. Ah, oh, <laughs> fucking kill me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, a drift. Good episode. I really liked it. I thought it was like a calm before the storm. Yeah. I'm going to smack you in a minute. Sorry, I just... <laughs> That's so funny. I just really did not know that was true. It is. I don't know how you think... No, it is. I looked up a picture. She's so good as Nessa. I don't know how you don't like her as Nessa. She's not. So, she is. Mate, she's just a skit. You're a skit. She's just you're a, a skit, you're a but joke. for, for, for you're three seasons. You're a character. Seasons. All right. What are you going to give a drift out? Sorry, we're not doing this episode much justice here, but... Um, I actually thought it was really good. The idea of this hospital and like an island with all the people who come through the rift, I thought it was quite gnarly and I actually really liked it. Yeah, the whole scream, like where he's screaming ah, is very... You uh, know, Jack's a massive dickhead all the time. I'm going to give it an 8. You're going to give it an 8? I'm going to give it a 7.5. Yeah, uh, it, it got some good emotional elements in there and I like how she was kind of like, you know, I would have rather not known... That's mad. And I like Jones that's... delivering a good performance. Okay. Um... <laughs> You mean all of Gavin and Stacey? I like how I sit here and I'm like, I do really respect your opinion about Gavin and Stacey. But Ruth Jones is but, so and then shit. Also you, hate, you hate her writing, you hate her I do, acting, actually. you hate yeah. everything about her. I think, yeah. Enough on Gavin and Stacey. We're just not going to agree on that one. Um, but I am also very aware that I'm in the minority. Until Christmas so. comes and I watch the special again and go, it was great. Oh, and you're like, well, it wasn't. The best, it was the best piece of television to ever <laughs> No, that's, that's the office Christmas special. UK <laughs> office, not the US piece of garbage. Don't get me started on that. Ted Lasso Christmas special, though. It's fine. No! Oh, oh you you got don't you, give got me you, no, got you, no, got you, mm-hmm. got you. That's one of the best no, pieces. Of I love it. Ever. I do. No, but you, now you know how it feels, you motherfucker. <laughs> huh? Huh? So that huh? was out of spite. Is yes, it was. was. I like it. Yeah. And I watched it before you. So oh, I you do this shit all the time, and you're like, I watched this shit before you, man. I actually did. So I actually didn't. You watched no, it I was. Me. Yeah, I watched last night before you. I'm just trying to razzle you. <laughs> Consider me just be razzled. Consider me razzled, dazzled, baby. And you hate Elf. Elf is... Directed by John Favreau. <laughs> Fuck Elf. Marvel's own. I'm not going into Elf. Cause do you like Elf? Yes. Fuck I like this. Elf. No, we're, we're not doing this. Uh, <laughs> we already had this conversation <laughs> on the podcast. Oh, did we? Yeah, on the Christmas special. Go check out that episode. Fragments. Uh, directed by Jonathan Fox Bassett. And written again by Chris Chibnall. Weird choice for Chibnall to write the last three episodes, but that's fine. I really um, like this episode. I so thought it was I. really cool. Yeah. I think it like joined all a bit because some characters' introductions to Torchwood were more interesting than others. Whose? Uh, would you say? Tosh's was a bit like... Oh, She made a Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> like, great. Yeah. And then Unit is like just putting her in like... Around the Unit just coming like... Hey, Unit's putting her in like some shit facility and like... Um, yeah. And, and Yanto works for Torchwood London, which I just never got that vibe from him, but that's that's fine. Yeah, I don't know. But like Jack's stuff was really cool and Owen's stuff was cool. And they were all cool and interesting to see. And yeah, it was just a good episode and it was a good way to build up all the characters, especially some characters like Yanto who had fallen into the background this season. Mm. I mean, Yanto has always been in the background. Um, but it was a great way to build them up before a big mm. finale. I, I was saying, um, I totally forgot he had a fucking fiance. Mm. That that threw me. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah, I really liked it. It was John Hart at the end. Mm-hmm. Who just decided just to blow him up, and somehow they all survived. And they're standing like, like the bomb is literally where like you are, and they're yeah. like looking at it, and they all survive. They don't get, and all of them do the thing where they go. There's like five seconds left, and they look at it, and they go, "Oh dear, there's a bomb. What am I gonna do? Maybe run. I don't know. Oh snap, Jack, there's a bomb. Oh, <laughs> is that? Uh, yeah, literally, yeah. none of them get uh, turned to strawberry jam. They just get covered in bricks. You know what I really appreciated this episode? Mm-hmm. And it's like it's such a small thing. Mm-hmm. But there's a there's a shot and it's like a top down of Owen. And there's obviously with Owen, it's like 
any damage that gets done to him at this point is permanent, which is which is a cool thing. Yeah. But there's this shot of of like a glass window with all these shards and stuff, um, and it, it's like this practical thing. And obviously, like it's just plastic or, or it's um, I can't remember the name for it, but glass that can be broken. Like when you see people break glasses on heads on their heads in movies mm-hmm. and stuff, like that's it's like a safety glass. It's mm. obviously something like that. Um, but like there's like I don't know. I just appreciated seeing this shot where mm. it was like you see this window drop a bit and then it drops a bit more and then a, sl- a slice of glass drops and they do all this stuff practically and there's obviously just like triggers that are triggering different things in it. Yeah. Um, but it just reminded me of like, you know, when you're on like a ride and it's like not necessarily a roller coaster ride, but like you're going through stuff and, right, and you little see. things are being like triggered yeah, around you. Yeah, and then like when you go out the window, they go back up yeah. and then they'll be ready to go for the next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. just like felt like that kind of thing for me and I, I don't know, I just like that. It's bogus that he gets covered in fucking bricks and he's not hurt. He's the only one dumb. that doesn't get any like But it's like, okay, whatever. I don't think I really appreciate it. It's like, I can't even remember. I think it was literally just a small little cameo from the first season when like Toshiko Ram misses her mum in like that scene. It's the same actress and I really oh, appreciate cool. that. Yeah. I re- I like the continuity. Same person. We love some continuity. Fun. Um I thought it was really cool. Um I got the impression that Yanto kinda of just wanted a job so he could bring Lisa back and Lisa gets a mention because that's right. why he was at Torchwood one, because of Lisa getting converted and that's why he wanted to bring her to mm-hmm. Torchwood. I think it was that. By the way, one thing I really found funny was like when Jack's driving in the Torchwood car. It's like, Tosh, do this. And you hear, yeah, okay. And it's like, Owen, do this. Yep. And it's like, Susie, do this. And Susie says nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. They obviously didn't have the, the actor. I'm like, couldn't you have clipped something from season one of her going like, yeah, yeah or <laughs> okay, or all right. Mm-hmm. Go on it, on it. Yeah. Anything, really. <laughs> no, it's just radio silence when they talk about Susie. Fucks. Man. Um, Susie was in ib one she was, yeah. Mm. I, I, it was one of those cameos. I well, not even a cameo. She's a character. She was a character that I saw, and like as soon as I saw her, I was like, I fucking know you. Where is it from? And I like sat on it for, for like keep ten minutes. Keep Susie, brother. And I was like, who is it? And it's Susie. Yep. Susie, mate. Um, and I think I actually ended up googling, and I saw her. Yeah. Like, and I saw Torchwood, and instantly I was like, it's Susie. She's in Game of Thrones too. Yes, she is. Yeah. Has to um, high. Which that. House of the Dragon is is coming out soon, but that's uh, we can save that for another episode. We love Matt. We love to talk too. about other parts of of movies. He loves, and TV shows. He loves dragons and pints. <laughs> uh, what are you going to give fragments? I was going to give eight point five. It's way too high. Eight. Going to give it an eight. Okay, I'm going to give it a seven. That's too high. Eight point five. Yeah, yeah. I think eight. I will allow an eight. From there's you. nothing too. There's nothing that great. A lot of aggression. It's because I'm getting angry that Carvinist is not coming back is for the a, centenary. Special. Is that a bit? Our dynamic becoming uh, that we hate each other. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no I don't think so. it's not just our dynamic. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Do you think? Do you think that's what the audience thinks? You got me worried. No, I don't now. think so. No, you got me worried now. I think uh, it's fun to have a dynamic when we can just be a savage. I don't think we hate each other's feelings. Bougie. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's a good. Um, I think it's a good. You know, if we were the same, it'd be dumb and boring. And mm. I'm glad that we disagree on things. And I think it's funny. Like the the Stranger Things gag is so it's become such a good gem of the show. Oh god, I hit it! It's gonna fall. It's gonna. It's become such a fun gem of the show. Yes. Even Dylan mentioned me saying Aiden's obsession with it is weird. I I it's think so though, funny. I think I don't know. I don't. I'm by no means obsessed with Stranger Things. At all. I just uh, it's a topic of conversation, right? For one, um, but two, like. I don't know. When I really enjoy things, and I've been told this before, when I really enjoy things, I become very passionate about it. Yeah. And I, and I, I have a lot of love for those things. And, and I just talk about them nonstop if I, if I really enjoyed them. And like, you know, like, I watched this Friends movie the other day that I thought was incredible. Um, Friends? Like French. the TV show? No, Friends. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and I, I thought it was like an incredible film. And I, I watched it and I, I really enjoyed it. And I definitely loved moments of it. But it was, you know, it was a hard, very intellectual film to watch, you know. Mm. Um, and did I love it? No, because like I love things that make me feel warm and fuzzy in t- inside, like Stranger Things or like, you know, a lot of those movies, like About Time and things like that. And they're those movies that I have an immense love and passion for, and and bring up all the time and talk about them a lot. Yeah. And um, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but I don't think. I don't think we, I don't think people think we hate each other. I like I like the dynamic no, we I don't have. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, because no, totally. like 
I think it's really good and I think that people like that and um, I think that we have a really I, I don't know I listen to we're some ruining shit. it we're really? ruining it by saying that it's it's just it's, a gag well, our, our, our just, beef is fake yeah well we did <laughs> we have had real beef before we have we have I got uh, Snapchat reminder literally a couple of days ago <laughs> about that said beef. That's fine. We don't need to go down there. Weirdly, we, in the... We, we'll have to go down the 200th episode. At some point, yeah. Our, our beef. Weirdly, in like the, you know, 100... This is episode 121 mm-hmm. of the podcast and like... Wait, are you including the first part? Yes. So, first part's 120. This is 121. Okay. okay. Um, weirdly, in 121 episodes and like what... Two, like 27 months of doing this podcast mm-hmm. uh, like we'd never really I don't think ever had no beef making it no know? that's why that's kind of why I messaged you the other day oh no did I last Saturday no I just said that like I just think we just work well together mm. but I think the thing that works really well is that we both respect we respect the fuck out of the idea that we need to like we both have shit done on time Yes. And I hate people who don't. Yeah. And I love that I know that you're going to get it up. And when I say to you, like, I'm, like the episode, and when I say to you, like, the episode's going to be up at 4 p.m., I don't give a fuck. I'm getting it done. Yeah, cool. Like, I was editing on my lunch break today because I love it. And I want to... And it wasn't... It didn't even feel like work. I love doing it. But also, I'm like, I don't have time to edit after work. I don't know what time I'm finishing because I never do. Mm-hmm. And I want to get it done now. So yeah. I got it done and I start uploading it at lunch because I love, I love doing it. And also, I love hitting that deadline. I love being able to work well together. I just like the fact that you're not a lazy twat. And I like that about you because I couldn't work with you if you were. I'm sorry. I yeah. couldn't. Like, I'll, yeah. Like imagine being a twat and also a lazy twat. At least this way it's I can hard. be a twat, but at least, at least I'm not lazy. Not, I like the fact that you, we have a very similar work ethic and I think we are on the same page a lot of the time, which is which is handy. And yeah. I think we just like work well together. You know? Dan, can these people even hear us probably. over the rain? I, well, think, <laughs> I think you can. that will probably get picked up. Yeah, definitely. That's that, that, is, perf, that's that perf rain moment, which has been, been crazy, man. On an awful day. Yeah. I mean, Aiden no. will stop uh, kissing each other now and <laughs> saying, I'm try. No, I do appreciate that, though. I do. Of um, course. And yeah, I, I feel like you, uh, actually, now more than ever, I feel have like developed a really strong like work work ethic. Mm. I, I feel like, um, not that you haven't in the past, but I, I, I oh, feel I like I can. Past. I feel like I you can, can say see. It. I uh, didn't. I literally didn't. I can see, you know, you really you know messaging me and you're like okay i'm gonna make sure i edit five clips this week and mm. you know you stick to that and you get them out on time in fact sometimes you're waiting on me to do the thumbnails for them oh it's okay um, but that's I, that's because yeah. sometimes i don't know what the no, you, you do tell me what the clips are early on but sometimes i forget and yeah i made sure today then. i was like I, I should probably tell oh no the camera died oh wait we'll fix the camera god that rain also is, the audio is fucked that, this is so loud holy shit no, i was i was just saying like i just remember now to like tell you the I'm like, I should tell you the um, clip I'm editing today, maybe before I start editing it, because that way maybe you can start working on the thumbnail before yeah. I go to upload well, it. Well, because sometimes you'll like edit it like late in the afternoon. I'm like, it's up, and, and you're like, well, and I'm, I'm, like I'm at work. Oh, like, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that, that's fine. Like, you do send me them early in the week, but sometimes I, um, yeah, I forget or whatever. Um, but no, yeah. Cheers to that, baby. Yeah, we have a really good work ethic, and I really appreciate it. I'm glad we're on the same wavelength. And do you know what I did do this week? I downloaded the episode, which you can do from the YouTube videos if you upload them. You can download yeah. them. I did that. Normally, I use Snagit. Was that easier? It was easier. Yeah, you should do that. But the thing I did wrong was like I went to edit and then downloaded it. It took like 45 minutes to download. So now, just before I edit, I'll download the episode. And then, yeah. But yeah, it made my life a lot easier. So. And that way, they're yeah. in proper HD and not like streamed hd exactly right because that's just bullshit it's a little bit compressed not much but a little bit um all right shall we wrap up this bad boy yeah one episode to go one episode to go exit wounds how did you find this episode directed by ashley way chris chibnall i found it on stan <laughs> wait did you, did you not watch on your own dvds <laughs> Fuck you. Can we just appreciate that shit joke? It was fine. It was fine. Stan is an Fucking Australian fine. streaming service. Yeah, everyone loves Stan. Um, I love Stan. I, I simp Stan. It gets better called soul. we got to simp it Stan. It does. For that reason alone, you have to simp it. Mm. Um, I think Stan has the best variety of, of more independent films, but also big films. Sorry, we need to get on topic here. This has gone long. Yeah, don't get me started because I want to make a comment at Disney Plus, but I can't. Go Fuck on. you, Disney Plus. You no, face. it has such good animations um, on it. I 
I still love my joke. That's how you can watch the Bob's Burgers movie. I found it on Stan. I think that was a great joke, but that's a... No, yeah, that one's okay. Who is Stan? I'm gonna shove that one Who is Stan? Rug. What a fucking dumb name. It's so stupid. It's a uh, channel. Is it Channel Nine? Yeah, Stan's Channel, channel Nine. Who is yeah. Stan though? Who is he? Who is Stan? It's no, the dumbest name ever. Maybe it's about Stan culture. No, it's not. We... <laughs> no, it's not. They probably. Like, we I guarantee stand. you, the owner of Stan doesn't even know what it's Stan like culture is. It's like our binge is called binge. Like Stan is because binge is a bad binge. name and Stan definitely it. binge is a great name and an underrated service. Do you know what really annoys me? What me? Binge is sponsored by Event Cinemas. And on the popcorn tubs, it says, for the unturn off a ball TV. That is not a word. The unturn off a ball TV. I think that's probably the point. They're trying to be hip and cool. I don't things. like it. It's not hip. It's not cool. It's not funny or cool. Right. It's I've, just stupid. To answer your question, I found Exit Wins. Wins? wins. <laughs> <laughs> this is the episode that will not end. It's just got to keep going. Until we're um, dead. Exit wounds. I, th- I feel like we've not done this in, in two weeks and now we're just blabbing like mm. crazy. Not by um, ourselves at least, yeah. Sorry, yeah, We're Josh. not just me and you for, for a while. That Josh was in the other week. <laughs> just wasn't us. Sorry, yeah, it wasn't the same. It's not the same, the same bro. The same. It's not the same. No, we, we stand Josh here. Uh, exit wounds, stand. I found... There you some- go. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> you said stand. You said stand. <laughs> exit wounds, I thought, was uh, it's all right in it. Great, Aiden, great. Elaborate. Well, like, Say something else and it's great. I mean, it started... This is all right. Did you think anything <laughs> well, else? Well, that's it. That was then like, this was all right. I kind of finished it and I was like, yeah, it's all right. It's all right, innit? Like, uh, like, it started and I was like, okay, it's cool. They're going big, Torchwood. You know, we got the gang all walking around last time together. Cool yep. shit. Last time together. Uh, and then I'm like, the guy that they've got to play Grey, is that his name, Grey? Oh, God. I just thought it was so flat it was boring, boring as hell yeah it wasn't um, so it wasn't john hart or the fuck his name yeah, is. It was it, he was not the, the bad twist. guy it was gray and john hart is like a good guy and he's like so charismatic on scene uh, on screen. hey he's great um i actually like john hart but i'm just like yeah the whole twist about it being yeah gray and they bay so him under the earth however yeah jack's they... like i miss you gray it's like i don't forgive you stab <laughs> It's like, wow, I didn't see that coming at all. But yeah, John Hart is good. I actually really do like his character. Doesn't ever come back, but I like his character. I think if it wasn't for Yanto and to- Yanto and Twoen, that is wrong in every way. Yan- no, Owen and Toss. Yes, Owen and Toss dying, die. They do, yeah. Uh, it would have done very little for me as an episode. Yeah. Because their deaths are emotional and they deliver really great performances at the end. And I, I just think if it wasn't for those performances then, yeah, I just don't think there would be a lot there in the episode. Yeah, I agree. It's the classic weevils are out. Mm-hmm. Classic in the city. There's this really weird classic. scene where... Literally, who composed this? Is it fucking Ben? Is it Ben who does the... Okay, I'll just leave that comment. What? I think it's Ben, the twat who does whatever... I don't even care. Right, but okay. like, you know, um He doesn't care. Um Yeah, um mm, I can't remember <laughs> what I was gonna say. Well Fuck, did you like blows. so you didn't did you like oh, this episode much? It. Sorry. Um <laughs> in Time Heist when that when they're like you know when um the twat who has the USB in his forehead mm-hmm. into his side of his head, um he's like, I'm showing every criminal that's ever robbed a bank, um that John Hart he shows up quickly. That's a good little Easter Fun egg. Fun Easter yeah. egg. And a couple of other parts from Torture Chop. Do you know, yeah, when I got nothing to say, I always like refer to people as twats and fucks and dumb shit. That's when I have nothing to say. But yeah, yeah. I did actually find uh, Toshiko and Owen's deaths very sad. I yes, love those characters very, very much. I and wish they were in Children it. of Earth. Huh? Wish they were in Children of Earth. Yeah, I, but I wish they I didn't also, kill them off. The show definitely couldn't have kept going the way it was. But like, that's I think exactly, this season that's was exactly really good. the point. Yeah, I, I think get this the was point. really good, but another season of this would have been like... We no, didn't that's exactly the point, though. Like, as much as I want them to be in Children of Earth, that is the point. That, like, you know, there's so many episodes where you're like, man, how the hell are you still alive? Yeah. Like, how are you still alive? How are you still kicking? As much as I would love to have seen them in Children of Earth, I do get it. Like, it's a job where you don't last very long. Eventually, you die. And I think yeah. that's the whole point. But... It's also a double-edged sword where I love the character so much that I want them to stay, but also I get it. In the episodes um, leading up to this as well, though, I definitely had a feeling of like, 
I don't want these characters to go. Like, I really do enjoy seeing Owen and Tosh and, and Yanto, you know, keeping in mind that I know he's going to die in Children of Earth. Is spoiler Maybe alert. if they all died on Children of Earth, that would have been cool. But Oh, what if they all died in that same scene? In Children of Earth? Yeah, like... Except Jack, who like, wakes up. With the Anto. Fuck, that's so tragic. I'm just thinking about that scene now. I can't wait for that. I haven't seen Children of Earth. It's funny because, like, when I finished season one, I was like, man, I really want Children of Earth. And now when I finished season two, I was like, okay, now I really want Children of Earth. But yeah. we, next, at the end of our, in our little break between season nine and ten, we're doing class, so... No, we'll do we'll do Children of Earth as well. You want to do class and Children of yeah, Earth? Yeah, we always... You we, want to do class and Children of Earth? We, we... Are you trying to kill me, sir? <laughs> it's only five episodes. Are you trying to kill me? We, and how many is class? Eight? eight. Yeah. You That's are fine. trying Just to kill me. schedule your life around this Is that 13 this again? That'd be 13. That'd right? be 13. But not all for one day. Are you, you trying know? to kill me? We'll... <laughs> But you know, like I, I like. I think Aiden is trying to kill me on the show. I like spending these times between. Me these too. I do too. Stuff, I do know? too. But like, like you know, there is we'll... no rush to fucking squeeze in every but I like doing drop. A, we do a torchwood every no, season. No, I agree. We do I a agree. Every season. But also, I think like you know, I get that like it it chronologically makes sense between nine and ten to do, to class, do class. But yeah, whatever. Well, I don't care. The fans want it. <laughs> I'm a slave. I don't to the think fans. anyone's asking for us to. To do class. Oh, come on. I think they will be on class. It'll be a good laugh. They'll want class. Because class is like... It's so funny because it only got one season. And it never got a, it never got a second chance. Down, 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 down. Waking up when someone's out of bed. What I was waiting for. Oh, my days. What have I done? Just always sneaking out the door. You know that song reminds me so much of fucking Leavers. No, 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 um, did you say you got in the car one day and it ran me on your playlist and you're like let's go literally like two months ago I just got in my car <laughs> and dun, 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 somehow dun, 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 I like bluetoothed my phone to my car and somehow it just started the song playing. that auto played was that which isn't in any of my playlists or anything <laughs> it just auto played and I was like motherfucker excuse me <laughs> like, oh but I God. definitely vibed I think it is a, like a headbanging light song oh my God. and I think I'm maybe I'll enjoy class Mm, we'll see me too I'm I, such a sucker for young adult stuff so when, when Dan this. wrote in the group chat class is shit I went fuck up remember I just sent fuck up <laughs> I did I'm <laughs> sick of this class uh, class hate hard class hate we're yeah. here to to stand up for class yeah we're here to stand up for class and we're here to give our final review I think this is one of those episodes where the beers have got away from us a little bit and that's <laughs> You know, well, we weren't going to drink, remember? The back end of for, series for four of our, of our podcast is literally this. Just like so two and a half hour yeah. episodes of us just like going off topic endlessly, which is which can be fun. I literally got a Snapchat memory like, like last week that was like, um, we I don't know if you remember this, but for season one and like two and stuff, we had one episode a season where we drank. Do you remember that? Not really? It was like we did a drunk So it episode. was the Boomtown episode where like we'd do the silliest episode drunk. I don't know if you remember that, but I right. got... I got, I got, I, that I got, very quickly became every episode. <laughs> I got a sat memory being like, I got I a drink on the that. podcast this episode. I'm like, damn, yeah. this episode? Damn. Well, I was going to say, like, I was supposed to not drink for like 20 minutes. Remember, I was like 20 minutes. You're like, mess me. You're like, are you drinking tonight? I was like, nah, man, I can't. 20 minutes later, I'm like, good news. I want the beers. <laughs> Is it a trap? Probably. Yeah. Here I am. That is funny. I yeah. just changed Ryan well, instantly. I've, I've actually, because um, I didn't drink last week on the show. And, yeah, me um, either, yeah. Yeah, I, I've not drunk in general. This is the most I've drunk in probably about a month. Um, really? Yeah, five drinks. Um, what? I had like a couple of beers when I went to the footy a couple of weeks ago to see the Frio. You don't get a tray every um, quarter? Oh, actually, this is a lie. You went to the 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 United, United game. game. I got. You said you got out. sloshed. Yeah, which was about three weeks ago. That would have been. That's the last time though. That's the last time. This is the most I've drunk since then. Yeah. Um, is Andrew not in town or something? What's going on? Just, I've just been. Uh, I hate to be that fucking wanky guy. I've just been really busy. I've just. Andrew's like, Aiden's best friend. Everybody, by the way. He's not my best. Fr- he's just one of my friends. Ooh. I don't have a best friend, which is a blessing and a curse. Really, you think so? Yeah, I just have a... Am I your best friend, Aiden? I have... 
I have he ignored it. He's, he said no on the show live. I, I think I, I'm blessed to have like no uh, best friends, a lot, but of, a friends, lot of friends, but no best friends. But not yet. But yeah. I, I think I would it maybe would have been nice to have yeah. less friends, but some that I'm closer to than the friends that I am. But that's it's. I don't think it's an insult to say someone's not your best. I think a best friend would be like, you see each other like a lot socially and probably like open up about shit that you just normally wouldn't and like you know sure yeah you know i guess like i was gonna say like we should we should get a fucking pint sometime we haven't gone out of the pub since the hundred episode that's the thing like i do consider you to be one of my best friends thank you i do too that's why i've messaged you drunk in the toilets at the galway hooker in scarborough <laughs> on saying i'm like hey, i just love <laughs> you don't let friends. work don't let it take advantage of you ain't i just love you bro yeah right yeah. yeah, we got a lot to discuss behind the scenes, mostly about the show and how it's like a like a, a plane <laughs> nose diving into a mountain. <laughs> All right, um, we're we gonna be back after this uh, chime sound effect that you're about to hear. Um, and what we're gonna have done in that time is we're gonna have calculated all. Th- no, we're not. Oh fuck! This this has become a shit show. Why? I need your score. Yeah. Of this episode first. Seven, please. So, yeah, okay, Exit Wounds, you're giving a 7. I also gave Exit Wounds a 7. Um, but yes, after after this chime sound effect... After these short messages. After this short message of a chime, chime sound effect, uh, we are going to have an average of all 13 episodes of us combined to one score. And that's going to be our overall feeling of Series 2 of Torchwood. We'll be right back. All right, folks, we are back. We are going to finally end this show for you after going on for um, too long. It's actually not as long as I thought, but I feel like we've rambled a lot. Hey, man, measuring tapes never lie. <laughs> Thanks, Torchwood Series 2 joke. We love it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so in this time, as I said, we've we've added together all of our scores from Torchwood Series 2, yep. and we've developed a score that is the average score the overall. from those. The overall score. Connor... What do you think your score is going to be? 5.5. Really? What, did I read it? I didn't read it. No, but... Are you accusing me of reading it? I'm just saying, you only gave one episode a four, and then everything else, (sighs) the lowest you gave was a six. I can't remember what I fucking gave. Last time I thought I gave relatively nice scores, and it was a 5.5. Fine, fuck it, you ruined it. 6.5. You gave it a 6.8. Ah, see? I got it. What do you think I've... What do you think my scores come to? Probably similar. Six point... Six point nine. Sixty-nine? Yeah. Uh, seven. So very close. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what? What? This is such a silly episode. Oh, fuck. I got it wrong. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I got it wrong. What do you want me to do? A backflip now? Is that entertaining? Where's that come from? Is that entertaining Dance, for you? monkey, dance. I love Titans and I. Dance, monkey, dance, monkey, dance, monkey. Oh, no, I don't. Oh. Just pain in the ass, in my opinion. Right, okay. I'm not sure what Macklemore's doing. She did a song with her. your favourite boy, Macklemore. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good yeah. song, but she's a pain in the bum. Okay. I normally I like Australian artists, but God. <laughs> next week. <laughs> what is happening next week? This has been a wild episode. Next week, uh, returning to the norm. Okay, we're back. We're starting series nine of Doctor Who. Right. More Pete. More guests, apparently. We've got one booked in officially, and that's it. Right. We, we've got to get the regulars back. It's been too long with yeah, the regulars. Yeah, so we're trying to get Dylan on, and we're trying to get Vinny on. Dylan and Vinny will be back for, so, for sure. Are and they? Also, are they booked in? We're doing it, mate. We're doing it. I know. Yeah, we're doing it. You're not going um, to say what episodes? In we'll we'll talk about off air. It's fine. Okay. See, it's Aiden fine. hates to say it. Case no, it's fucking... not that. You do. No, you it's do. not fucking that. It is. It's it just, is. No, I haven't figured it out. I just got to schedule the shit. Yeah, exactly <gasps> right. Oh exactly my God. right. That's okay. why. He and, hates saying uh, it. We're working to get some other, some other guests from the Who community on board. Yeah, one's confirmed, but I won't say it. Because Aiden will cut it out. Because Aiden will fucking cut it out. But there is one. I'm, I'm deep on the cover in the DMs. <laughs> Shut up! I am. We're, so we're buddies. I'm, I'm buddies I'm so with so many yeah, top right. dogs these oh, days. We're besties. Y'all have no idea. We're so tight. I'm how sorry. tight. My- you know Why are you even- gonna make a fucking podcast with them? I don't even message him through the podcast account anymore. Through my private account, I'm like only me, and they're like, "Hi." <laughs> okay, God, God, sorry. 
You like you want to fucking end this <laughs> shit. God. We are resuming series nine of Doctor Who next week, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Magician's Apprentice, which is familiar, um, it's well past our bedtimes. Let's wrap this baby up. John's you know funny. You just said Magician's Apprentice and sound like you say, which is familiar. Not which is familiar, like which is familiar. I'm just saying, like, like the you Magician's might remember Apprentice, this, you which might, is familiar, you know. Like the Magician's Apprentice is familiar too. Like that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. And at some point next season, I'm going to have a surprise. Yes. A surprise that could come by Monday or Thursday whenever we record, but it also could not. Awesome. So we'll see. Is um, that Aiden's hint telling me that we need to record Monday because I can't do Monday? No, that's fine. Okay, great. That's fine. I Aiden's, would, I would not, got a, Aiden's got, not got a film shoot. What you got, Monday? No, I, w- I, I would have liked Monday, but I, I I can do Thursday if I have to. Instead of doing a film shoot, I'm going to see a film like a sucker. No, I was going to see a friend sucker. that I don't get to see very often, on, but only has on Thursday my, on nights Thursday. off. Oh, but shit. But that's fine. I'm sure Fergus will be down soon. It's not fucking Fergus. Fergus lives in Perth now. Don't, we're not, why are we doing he's this? He's back. No one even knows what who, we're talking who, about. Who's back? Who's, we're not doing this on who's the only, why, who's What's only, the point of doing this on the podcast? Who's only here on Thursday? My friend Josh. Was, is there much of a need to discuss what, this on the podcast? No. Okay. Other Josh. Is there a... Your friend group, Josh. Yes, my friend group, Josh. Oh, he'll be around. Huh. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> Can are we going to sing the song or are we going to do the torture theme to go out this week? Um, you want to do the torture theme? Because you don't get to play it a lot. Yeah, okay. We'll go out to the torture theme. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, everything in between. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Find us on Twitter and Instagram at 50 Doctor. Subscribe to the 50% Doctor Who podcast YouTube channel where you can see all sorts of clips from the show. I've been Aiden. I've been Connor. Unfortunately. And now it's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so oh, sorry God. for the mess that this episode has turned into. It's the torture special, baby. 50, 50, 50. 50, 50, 50. 50, 50, 50. 50, 50, 50. Touch one, touch one, That's one for the... Uh, that's, that's what they call a straight to DVD. What, this episode of the podcast? Yeah, straight, straight to DVD. To DVD. <laughs> no, no free outscore release. I think we started off well, and somewhere along the way, we got a bit silly. And it was great, maybe. I don't know. It's great to uh, for you and I, like having That's a laugh. What Aiden... But God knows what the listener experience they is like. They love it. They literally do. I swear, it's all way over They're here. More. Get drunk on the podcast more. If you say so. You could have got a mullet, by the way, you didn't. I didn't. I did. Yeah, you never addressed my haircut on this podcast, and that's quite depressing. I'm actually. doing it now. You could have gotten a mullet. Oh, it's the end credits. Most people have. Most people have. Most people have gone off by this point. You literally could have done the end credits. I oh no. Or maybe I saw yours and I was like, <laughs> "Shut the fuck <laughs> up!" Oh my god. <laughs> Turn this off.